Hello everyone, this will be a series of videos where I show how I made games with programming languages that you don't see every day being used to make games. In this case, we will be taking a look at PHP. PHP is mostly used in the web development context. Originally, it was made to create dynamic web pages. But you can also use it to manage server-side scripting. If you take a look at its Wikipedia page, you will notice that it's defined as a general-purpose scripting language which means you can use it to make any kind of software, such as graphical applications, robotic drone control, and in my case, video games. Its use is much more focused on web development, so that's why I consider this language unusual for making games. Who knows, maybe someday there will be a game engine made purely in PHP. Anyway, let's take a look at what the game is about. It's actually pretty simple. A randomized maze is generated. You start at the top left, and have to make it to the exit which is located in a random position in the border of the maze. You have five levels to complete in a certain amount of time. The first maze is just you, but when you keep advancing, the maze gets larger and also four ghosts will chase you. They all have different ways to move around the maze. The red one will try to get to you, but it does in a naive way. That's why most of the time it gets stuck in a loop. The purple one is the same as the red, but sometimes it will randomly change its path towards the exit. The yellow one goes straight to you, moving through walls. To make it fair, it moves very, very slow. Lastly, the cyan one moves very, very fast but at random positions, so it may or may not get to you. To make this game, I used PHP SDL, which is an extension to use a C library called SDL. This way, interacting with the operating system is way much easier. I don't consider using a C library or any kind of C code cheating as long as the entire logic of the game is made in the language of choice. As I said, the C programming language makes things like creating a window, playing a sound, etc. much easier to do. Let's talk about the code. I'm not going to get into much detail because reading code is boring. You can do that yourself once I open source this game. This is how I organized the code. First there's a main script, which is pretty simple. It's the entry point of the game. It creates a game object, initializes things and runs forever. Then there's the game script, where everything comes together. The game class contains the main game loop, and different variables that control different parts of the game. The game loop is very simple. First we take care of the events that SDL detects. Like pressing a key and closing or resizing the window. The update function which is used to move the player and the ghosts around, and finally the draw function which renders everything on screen. The player, the ghosts and the maze. Then we have five different objects which each one control different parts of the game. First, we have SDL render, which it simply handles the creation and destruction of the window and the renderer. Second, we have the text object. This particular PHP extension doesn't have any way to render text, so if I wanted to show text on the screen I had to make my own tool for that. Basically, I created a texture containing letters and numbers in order, then I set an array containing the same letters and numbers in the same order. Now I just have to pass a string to the object which can be indexed as an array, and render the corresponding letter on screen. I'm surprised this actually worked the first time. The maze object controls everything related to the maze, the position of the walls, the current level, and whether the player can move to a certain position. To create the maze, I used the Wilson algorithm, which was surprisingly easy to implement. I'm not going to get into the details, so here's a simple animation on how it works. This implementation is from a blog called The Buck Blog, I will link it in the description. Third, we have an array of enemy objects, which I think is the ugliest code I have ever written in my life. You probably don't want to look at that script. The entire logic of the ghosts I explained before is contained in a single class. It handles where the ghosts should move next. Next, we have the player, where it simply moves according to what key the user pressed. Finally, there's a common object to both a player and enemy, which is the animation object. I passed it a sprite sheet and all the information about it like the rectangle of a single sprite. The scale, where to render it, if it can loop, etc. With that, I can create a list of sprites and set it in unique ID in a dictionary so I can control what animation is playing. 
Here's a diagram that shows how the scripts are organized. And that's it. That was a brief overview of how I organized the code of this game. To finish this video, I will show you a simple playthrough. Thank you for sticking until the end. Thank <laughs> you.